I got bribed with cardboard to make a how to play video, so this video is hashtag sponsored by Boundless. Transition. Boundless is a trading card game where you fight alongside a savior, a leader type card that you power up throughout the game using various spirits. You can also support your savior with creature like form cards and spell type command cards as you battle it out with one or more other players trying to put seven spirits into your enemy's void area. Imagine Yu-Gi-Oh with a bit of buddy fight, vanguard, and a pinch of Pokemon. That's probably not the clearest picture, so let's just get to the rules. In the game, there are four types of cards, saviors, spirits, forms, and commands. First off is your savior. You start the game with this bad boy, or girl, or otherwise gendered or genderless construct on the board. It has a power stat which is used for combat, and an effect text box. Usually saviors have a unique effect, but the secondary effect always has some condition, like this one is to have five spirits under it, and then the phrase, flip this card to its boundless state. Well, let's see what happens when we... Oh yeah, that's right. These saviors are all double-sided with a more powerful boundless state that can be unlocked as the game goes on. They have higher power and more different effects than their bound side. You can only get to boundless with spirits though. And that's the next card type. Spirits are like your resources, equip cards, and life points all at the same time. They go off in their own deck, have their own discard pile, and even have their own card backs. Spirits can be attached to saviors and forms, which I might as well segue into and come back to spirits in a second. Forms are the creatures of this game, and you can have up to two of them on the board. Forms have power levels and effects just like saviors, but they also have a level that's denoted by these orbs at the bottom. The only forms you can play directly to the board are level zero forms with no orbs. No pondering for these chums. That's... Still a good meme I can use, right? You can play as many level zero forms as you want during a turn, but there's a whole bunch of levels that aren't zero, so how do you play those? Well, you gotta climb the ladder with a level sacrifice. Once per turn, you can chunk a form to your drop zone to play a form from your hand with an equal level or one level higher than the sacrificed form. Zero to one, one to two, two to two, and so on. Except you can't kill a level zero for a level zero. That's illegal. Now you might think, wow, that'll take a while to go from zero to three if I can only go up one level per turn, but level sacrificing is more like a backup plan for getting the things you want in play. Most higher level forms have some way to play themselves to the board or at least make the process faster. Forms and saviors will be the ones that attack your opponent. Forms can only attack saviors or use their effects if they've been spiritualized though, which means they've listened to at least one full tool album, which means they have at least one spirit under them, attached to them, equipped to them, what have you. Spirits often have effects that boost forms like the boost spirit that gives 3,000 power. These power-ups do not apply to saviors though. Spirits on saviors are strictly used for going boundless and sometimes activating saviors effects. Die! Finally, we have the command cards, which act like spell cards. They can be placed face up or face down in the three command zones on the board and come in four different flavors. Normal, bound, swift, and interrupt. Normal commands are playable on your turn, and when you play them, you just do what they say and then they get dropped. To the drop zone, not off the table. Common misconception. Bound commands stay on the board instead of going to the drop zone when they're used, and they stay on the board until something says that they should leave. Swift commands can be used at any point during your turn from your hand, and you can also activate them on your opponent's turn if they're face down on your board. Interrupt commands are similar but can only be placed face down and only activated when the card's condition is met. Both swift and interrupt commands can't be used the turn they're set face down though. Gotta wait until the next player's turn for that. And those are all the card types in Boundless. Now let's go through the setup and phases of a turn. Boundless is played with a 30 card main deck where you can have four copies of any card. You'll also need a savior and a 15 card spirit deck, which has limitations on a few of the specific spirit types but otherwise doesn't have any limit. Time to make 15 boost spirits deck. I'm sure this takes boundless worlds. Maybe more like windless worlds. 
You start the game by shuffling both decks and then drawing five cards from your main deck. You can then decide any number of cards you don't want and put them on top of your deck, reshuffle, and then draw back up to five cards. This is called a mulligan. After the mulligan, you determine who goes first by the old high roll, die roll. And then the winner gets to decide if they want to go first or second. At this point, every turn goes as follows. Draw step. Draw a card from your main deck. Invoke step. Draw a card from your spirit deck. This is also known as invoke ing. Act step one. This is where you play your form and command cards as well as activate their effects. You can also do your level sacrifice here, which is that thing where you drop a dude and then play a dude of equal or one level higher value. You can even spiritualize your uh, spirits to your forms and your savior, but you can only attach one spirit per uh, being per turn, so you're gonna need some effects to ramp up your spirit count on the savior. After that is the combat step. You don't get this on the first turn of the game, Otherwise, any of your forms and your savior can make one attack per turn. Forms can only attack a savior if they're spiritualized, but they can attack other forms whenever they feel like it, man. Combat against forms is pretty simple. The bigger number wins, the loser gets sent to the drop zone. Any spirits attached to the defeated form go to the void. If the power on both forms is the same, if it meets, it beats, and the attacker wins the fight. Combat with saviors is almost the same, but if a savior takes damage, the top card of the spirit deck is sent to the void. And remember that if seven spirits enter the void, it's game over for that player. Swift and interrupt effects can also be used during the combat phase, so you gotta watch out for those too. Oh no. After the combat step is over and you've stomped your enemies, the creator thought the act step was so good that you get act step two, baby. You can do anything you didn't do in act step one, but now after combat, woohoo! Some effects are only available to use in act step two. Act step two is not right for everyone. Please consult your doctor before attempting to use act step two. Finally, there's the end step where some effects might happen or something might happen. And then the next player starts back at the top with the draw step. And that's basically how you play Boundless. You go back and forth playing more powerful forms, putting together combos, and inching, or maybe even sprinting towards that Boundless state. If you want to know more, check out their website, or maybe their Discord. They run casual game nights every other Friday where you can earn rewards for playing. They're also about to run a Kickstarter for their new set Phantom Gravity, and a reprint of the first two sets with a new manufacturer that can do selective foiling. Anyways, thanks for watching. If you liked the video, maybe smash that like button and subscribe. I'll have more card game content coming your way. I'm Two Lanes, the Card Boy Crypt Keeper, and I'm out.